After reading hundreds of books, these are the 15 that I think you should read before you die. Book number 15 is How to Live by Derek Sivers. This is an incredible book. It basically has multiple different chapters giving a detailed argument on how you should live your life. And every single one of the chapters you'll think, yes, that's right, that's the way I should live my life. But yet every single one of the chapters contradict each other. You can't fit all of them right together in one cohesive paradigm. So all of the chapters are right, yet they don't fit together. Really makes you question the way you're living your life and inspires you to live life differently. Book number 14 is Navalmanak by Naval Ravikant. This is actually a free book that you can get online and it's incredible. It covers two main topics. First of all, how to build wealth and second of all, how to be happy. Normally, you see people that are incredibly wealthy but are unhappy. Or you see people that go down the other route who focus on their happiness and think that earning money is bad. Yet this book gives an incredible insight on how to build wealth and how to be happy at the same time. It's really incredible. And book number 13 is all of the books by Kapil Gupta. Kapil is actually one of Naval's coaches and you'll see some of the inspiration that Naval draws from Kapil. And Kapil is an incredibly deep thought leader that thinks very controversial and different thoughts to some of the thoughts that you'll be exposed to through society. He's very raw, very direct, very honest, but yet very poignant and gets to the truth of the matter very quickly and very directly. Number 12 is Principles by Ray Dalio, but it's the kids version. So Principles is a great book, really detailed insights on principles about how you should operate in your work life and in your normal life but it's quite dry and difficult to get through. The chapters are quite long and it's quite academic. Principles, the kids version, distills some of the best insightful points that Principles makes, but puts it in an easy to read story with plenty of pictures. The thing I like about this is it's kind of like Disney. You can enjoy it if you're a kid, but you can also enjoy it if you're an adult. Book number 11 is $100 million Offers by Alex Hormozzi. Alex Hormozzi's recently come to the YouTube scene, he's completely killing it, and he's dropped a book that in the business world is spreading like wildfire. It basically teaches you the most important element of business, which is creating offers and presenting offers to people, and how the offers that he's created has earned him $100 million. If you're into business and you really want to understand more of the fundamentals, uh, less about marketing, but more about the most important thing, which is what you're actually selling, then I'd recommend you read this book. Number 10 is Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. This was one of the first books that started me on the personal development journey, and I think it's truly incredible to think that the most powerful person on the planet at the time, the Emperor of Rome, Rome, who was fighting on the battlefront, would go home every single evening and write down into his personal journal some of the things that he was realizing about how to live a good life. And yet we are now able to get access to that personal journal. It's such a rare and magical and monumental piece of history. And the fact that we all get access to it and get to marvel over how clearly and concisely he's able to summarize some of the problems that are still so relevant today is just something that completely blows my mind. Number nine is Dot Com Secrets by Russell Brunson. A great book if you're a beginner entrepreneur trying to figure out how you can earn an income online. It is really, really good at breaking down step by step what you need to do to earn your first dollar online. And it was actually one of the first books that I started that prompted me to make this YouTube channel. A really great book, even though it's quite old now, uh, all of the points still hold true and it's very well written. Book number eight is Essentialism, a book that will continuously drive into your head the importance of less is more. And nowadays we think that if you want to be really productive, you have to do more, you have to say yes to everything, you have to be running around. This book actually says that no is the most productive word. And by saying no, we're able to find space to focus on the few things that are actually really, really important. Book number six is The Kabbalion a weird book that's out there and a little bit strange when you read it, but yet somehow is able to identify some of the underlying laws that operate in the universe. For example, I talk a lot about the law of cause and effect and how if you can understand that, it's much easier to choose your goals. In reality, all a goal is, is it's an effect in the future. And because of the law and the cause and effect, we know that any effect will come about because of a set of causes. So you can get rid of all of the distractions when you want to achieve a goal. All you have to focus on is the question, what are the causes that lead to the effects that I desire? Book number five, So Good They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport. 
When most people think of Cal Newport, they think of deep work, but I actually fell in love with the book So Good They Can't Ignore You, which actually discovered that most people that love their job are the people that have been in their job for a very, very long time. Following your passion is a bad idea. You're not gonna one day stumble across a random activity and immediately fall in love with it. What actually happens is you'll find an activity that you're kind of interested in, and as you get better at that activity, that's how you fall more and more in love with it. For example, I remember the first time I played chess. It wasn't like some magical moment where I fell in love with it. What's happened is the more that I learn about chess and the more I play chess, the more I understand how complexly beautiful it is. And the better I get at it, the more I love it. So instead of following your passion, try and get so good at something that people can't ignore you, then the passion will come. Book number four is called Steal Your Work by Austin Kleon. I'm actually gonna add in here, show your work and keep going, both written by Austin Kleon. The trio is a great combination of books if you're a creative or an artist, especially if you're a creative that just hasn't started putting out the work that you love doing because you're scared and you have mental roadblocks. If you wanna be a YouTuber, if you wanna be an artist, if you wanna be a writer, these books will help you get over the mental blockers and just start acting. Book number three is Way of the Superior Man. And before you try and cancel me, it's not as bad as it sounds. This book is almost like a spiritual book that I've put in there because it's so beautifully written. It's like poetry the whole way throughout. Where if you're a man and you're kind of feeling a little bit lost, this book will help you find direction, give you more of a manual for how to live as a modern day man, in, which is it's quite difficult. There's, there's contrasting uh, beliefs on the way a man should live and this book so poignantly and beautifully written that I really think that it can inspire a lot of the men out there. Book number two is Poor Charlie's Almanac, which was a book written about Charlie Munger, a billionaire, but a billionaire who's got there through playing positive sum games. A billionaire who's got there by prioritizing relationships and by prioritizing being a good person. Really incredible book. And book number one is The Slight Edge. This book really summarizes all of personal development into just a few pages, will inspire you and teach you how to be consistent in the things that actually matter on a day-to-day -day basis. This book completely transformed my life and it's really incredible and I highly recommend you read this book. Onto the bonus book, which is a journal. Reading all of these books is great. It's great to be coached by other people. But sometimes what's better than being coached by other people is coaching yourself. And the best way I found to do that is through a journal. But instead of just writing Dear Diary, whenever you're facing a problem, write it down. There's a reason that massive companies like Amazon and Stripe have what they call a writing culture. Clear thinking comes from clear writing. If you wanna learn more about that, there's a video on screen about how to go deeper into this journaling practice.